so I want to take it back a little bit because again, I, I'm going to keep saying that like kind of on accident, but kind of plug kind away. of plug away, knock yourself out, shout. <laughs> so you were a part of two of the biggest Super Bowl shows. I think the two most memorable Super Super Bowl shows ever. We had 2001, where it was Aerosmith, NSYNC, Britney Spears, and you. And then 2004, we had Janet, JT, T. Diddy, Kid Rock. How did you get involved? How did they put those together? Take us, tell us how that happened for the um, fans. I have no idea. Well, I think at that time, I think MTV was executive producing the, uh, the Super Bowl halftime show. So a lot of that comes from like MTV, who, who since the beginning of Nelly's career was just right there, man. I mean, you know, um, all, Number of one video, fan. all of the video channels, but definitely MTV, when it comes to the TRLs and things like that, they supported Nelly so, um, from, from like the beginning. So they, they were always in my corner, man. They showed me a lot of love. And obviously, um, you know, being on a Super Bowl halftime show was – was incredible, was incredible. Um, I'm not saying that just because I'm a huge football fan as well. And I got a chance, to, you know, I never thought I would do just being at the Super Bowl a bunch of times, but yeah, it, it was very memorable. So I don't know how to exactly go into doing it, but I'm just thankful that they allowed Nelly to be a part. Do you look at Super Bowl shows now and be like, come on, we need more camaraderie with a bunch of different artists, not just these one artist people. Well, I mean, listen, I, I, I think um, I think it definitely can take a, a, a different route as far as getting more and more people involved and, and just being a little bit more hipper. But a lot of times, you know, when you're dealing with those sponsorship dollars, nobody, nobody, everybody's cringing and, 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 and fingers crossed that, um, <laughs> you know, they don't get the picket signs out in front because something something didn't go the way that they wanted to go now but a boob comes uh, out you know yeah no it's, it's 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 way way more political i would say than when you were dealing with something such as an MTV and that's why i probably think at that time you with MTV being who they were and and understanding what music was that they had a lot more leeway um of putting together artists and things and the show to, in a way that people would um enjoy it but not not that none of these super bowl shows have haven't been good a lot of them yeah. a lot of them are i agree i just always look back literally at the two that you were involved in i'm like no one will ever top these two shows we can try oh. all we want but i think it was cool to look at all these different artists kind of that you don't see performing together you know we wouldn't see you and britney spears going on tour or you and Aerosmith going on tour together but to see although we say that and then now we have songs with you and Florida Georgia Line so I guess never say never <laughs> but it was cool to see different people coming together and do you think that do you think artists are still kind of trying to work together the way you are reaching out to country music or do you think everybody's yeah. kind of trying to stay in their own lane no I think you have to work together I think you have to work together. I think the way that music is, as far as, you know, people wanting more content now than ever, people wanting, you know, a different variety because things kind of dry up so fast. It's like, yo, this is hot now and everybody's on it. And then before you know it, that's drawn up. Now what's, what's new. And I think it's hard for an artist individually to, to keep a certain type of momentum without being able to tap in and work with others to be able to show their, 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 their range. I think it's about showing your range now and showing your versatility um, more so than ever. And speaking of other artists, when you came out with Country Grammar, I mean, it was hit after hit after hit. Uh, it went diamond, right? The album. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I mean, ma so now do you, like looking at Olivia Rodrigo, it's been a long time since we've had an album like that where it's like every song on there people are loving. Have you listened to her album? Do you know, do you know any of the songs? Are you jamming uh, out? Oh, I haven't, I haven't listened to that album, but um, you know, I, I, I'm definitely aware of her, of, of her success. And I just, congratulations. Cause I know how hard that is when I, when I was in it in the beginning. So I can imagine how hard it is now. It's super hard because 
to physically sell those type of units is 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 incredible. What did it feel like to just take off? Did you always know when you put that album out? Did you know like I'm about to be a superstar or hopeful? No, or- <laughs> no, yo, you're definitely hopeful. I think you're definitely hopeful as an artist that when you put out material, um, that people will see it um, as you put your effort into it. But no, I we didn't. I, I was just hoping to make enough money to make a, a own a barbershop, maybe get a little corner store. You know what I mean? And, and, and you go from there. You know what I'm saying? So to have the success was was really, really dope. But we believed in the music. I definitely believed in the music. I definitely believed that, yo, uh, if people would take to it as I was, you know, putting the effort into it that we could have something special. So, you know, you're thankful for that. Yeah. Is there something that you did back then that you thought wouldn't be a big deal, but has now lasted your entire 21 year career? Uh, I don't know. I think like maybe some of the, some of the songs only because, only because, you know, when you're a creative person, your, your process is your process and people don't always know your process. They just get the, the final result. So I think part of the fantasy of when you're believing in artists is, you, you know, you're kind of imagining how that process could have took shape and how it relates to you and how, you know, you enjoy it. So sometimes you can put this uh, imaginary story together around things that you gravitate to, but, um sometimes that process is completely opposite it's kind of like like with ride with me i i never thought the success of ride with me would be as big as it was only because it was just a song that i literally wrote in the car that that the beat used to come on after ei i never took the song as serious as the song became you know what i mean so it was it, it was literally uh, uh, almost a freestyle type of record, you know what I mean? Just, just, yeah. just writing, and every time it came on, and it's one of Nelly's biggest records that he ever did. And I, I would never have thought that. And then you have other records that that were on the album that I put so much time into, but they never really manifested to being as big as songs like uh, "A Ride with Me" or something like that. So that that. That's something that um, that will probably baffle you or definitely baffles yep. me, probably other artists too as well. Absolutely. What is, is, do you have a song that you don't like performing even though everyone loves to hear it? Man, I love performing anything people pay to see Nelly do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like whatever my fans support, if, if, if I wrote it, if I put it together, no, 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 no. I, you, you, you can't, you can't because it's one of those, one of those things where you know, you should be thankful and be blessed that people want to hear you do what you created, especially if they paid their money to see you do what you created. You know, that's that's definitely one of those scenarios where, no, I don't take that for granted. And I'm, and I'm very, very thankful that people still want to hear from them. So I know that with a lot of your songs, I heard them, you know, as a teenager growing up, that I never knew the real words. So I made up the, my own words, but I still sing it with the made up words. Okay. <laughs> okay. So not- do you ever look out in the crowd and realize someone is singing the complete wrong words and you're just like, that ain't it, but okay. Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes like if you hold the mic out and you, you, you give it to people uh, do and, or, <laughs> and, and they do it. But I think, I mean, listen, I, the fact that the fact that they would um, the fact that they would that they would uh, it's music is inside. You know what I'm saying? They still sing it with the with the passion of as they 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 know what they're saying. So that's all that matters to me. That's all that matters. I love it. Thank you. Because if I if you ever hand me the mic, I'm going to say something wrong. But we're just going to have to roll with it. <laughs> Got you. Did you think that? 21 years later, people would still associate you with a Band-Aid on your face? Uh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> not, 
But I mean, you know, it was it was a moment, and it's crazy because what I wore the band aid for probably like two years out of twenty two, and people, <laughs> it's, it's 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 like you know, but I mean, hey, again, um, it's 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 recognition. And it's something that people, you know, they remember. So it's it's not the worst thing. It, it beats them hating you. You know what I mean? Like it definitely beats them hating you.